Hi all, I have a very interesting and profoundly instructive game by Thomas Kaz this morning. This was on the Leela Chess Forums, Games of Commenting. So he describes it as a nice attacking game from Leela. So this is 10780, a higher ID than the recent TSEC. So has Leela evolved further? And it was against Stockfish 8. Leela's on a GTX 1080 and Stockfish on a 4 core uh, machine. So the time control, 3 minutes with 2 second increment. Uh, the book moves given, I think they were encouraged to play the French defense. So the French defense does weaken dark squares fundamentally, uh, you could say. Knight c3, d5. We go into the classical variation. Uh, in particular, here we have the Alakine Chattard Gambit variation. So, what is offering a gambit here? And I've used this myself in over the board. This isn't taken, but this is very interesting. Knight h3 with a lot of pressure in you know, knight f4. So Anakine Chattard Gambit territory. But uh Stockfish perhaps rather wisely is not too greedy. <laughs> and unlike other other engines we've seen recently, in place h6, black just really wants to strike hard at the center with c5. White goes back and c5 is played anyway. We have Queen G4, which is one perk of this advanced pawn chain in the center to try and at least cause a concession. Black does play King F8, causing a concession. If you want to check my pinned comment, I've analyzed other stuff as well. Uh, interactive PGN pinned comment of this video. Say G6, probably it's a good idea to play D takes here and release that central occupation. This continuation seems black might actually be slightly better. Um, so yeah, uh, it's uh, King F8. Sorry, uh, King F8 may be not optimal. We have F4 now reinforcing the center, Knight C6. Another option for Black is to just take on D4. This position uh, seems as though White should be okay. Even casting Queenside might be an option. And you can see White has a small edge. Uh, so okay, so knight c6, and we have here knight f3, queen a5, h5, sealing down black's pawn, stopping h5 from black. So the queen is left on g4 undisturbed, no disturbed sign. Knight b6, and now not casting queenside. There's a welcoming committee on this side of the board. It said king f2. Now, one thing about casting queenside, it does protect b2. Uh, that is one small perk. Black takes on d4 here, and we have some exchanges on d4, and now knight a4. If white's not careful, if one plays this casually, white can end up with absolutely nothing from this position. You could say that in the ideal world, from the opening, white should be stronger on the dark squares, but there's a there's a way of white really misplaying this potentially. As humans, I think we generally do to be really weak and poor on, on the dark squares, when in fact, with dynamic play, we can be strong and rich on the dark squares. And it's really the finesses and accuracy and dynamism we're prepared to take to try and achieve that uh, richness and strength. And here, an example of a casual move on the dark squares is rook b2, because as well, the bishop pair is very useful. If we're going to have an advantage on one color complex, the bishop pair is very useful to have our cake and eat it when we do have a stronger, say, dark square pressure. This is an example of going to poorness on the dark squares. Black could play knight takes tactically. And here, bishop c5, threatening queen takes c3. With the king on f2, black can get away with this uh, devious tactical sequence. Uh, for example, here, queen takes and then taking on c3. Uh, so it's it's not very palatable this position. This is a way of just blowing the position here. Uh, if knight e2, then the bishop pair goes, and again, there's no there's no real advantage here for white. There's nothing gained from this at all. But stunningly, Leela plays super dynamic chess now. A maintaining the bishop pair, and B trying to be rich on the dark squares as far as i can see with king g3 offering b2 now 
as a pawn sacrifice that is taken uh, taking on c3 uh, is no big deal this position okay the dark square bishop can be got rid of but white stands better anyway here this is nice because there's an issue with g7 here for example this situation is very dangerous for black trapping the queen if the queen doesn't uh, be uh, if it's not very silly then again rook g3 and we've got pressure on the dark squares despite the absence of the dark square bishop and it just needs bishop d3 to h7 like this for example to demonstrate a big advantage so anyway knight takes b2 we have rook b1 knight c4 so bishop pair how does white get stronger on the dark squares well not taking on c4 would lose that bishop pair we have bishop d3 uh, example if we take on c4 this position is just no big deal without the bishop pair so bishop d3 bishop b4 now here is a, another key move to try and be a bit stronger and richer on the dark squares knight b5 trying to take out tactically black's dark square bishop the guardian on these dark squares uh, on knight e2 that was an alternative but you know why it's slightly better there as well but this is much more interesting in a way bishop d7 is played ignoring this because queen takes b5 a3 the tactical check and white could stand uh, with a small uh, advantage that here in this concrete position is okay okay so um bishop d7 was played instead just ignoring that for a moment c3 and now actually black takes on b5 with the light square bishops giving white that dark square bishop so mission achieved uh to get a bit stronger there on the dark squares here you can see that the bishop power has been maintained uh so white is strong on the dark squares here bishop a6 if a6 is an example then a4 this is nice with rook h3 uh f5 you can see the bishop pair really really powerful and this this is a disaster scenario for black uh, this kind of scenario is why it's got a really big advantage so uh bishop a6 is played but f5 anyway you can see that lovely bishop pair trying to rip open that f file e takes bishop takes really nice to have the light square bishop around and with e6 on the cards hitting g7 this position already looks very scary <clears throat> this is prevented by pinning the pawn but here white really goes to be super rich millionaire on the dark squares now keeping the bishop pair important you can if, if you can be strong on dark squares without the bishop pair you might not be able to exploit them that easily so guess what white plays here beautiful beautiful move if i give you five seconds to pause the video okay white does an exchange sacrifice look at the two bishops look at e6 imminent this this will be able to nudge any rook off g8 it's important to keep the bishop pair to be stronger on dark squares without the defensive resources if you have the bishop pair uh, alternatives on rookie one for example rookie eight this alternative uh, should be this is winning uh, for white discontinuation if black wants to play uh, terribly but if black doesn't want to play terribly with knight takes e5 uh say so knight d2 this position isn't as fun white is better but it isn't as fun as the game continuation the fun of e6 has been taken out here with that blo blocking defensive knight so uh anyway so rookie one wasn't played we have rook takes c4 knocking out that knight sometimes uh we've noticed from Leela when she gives up a bishop for a knight it's the other colors that become weaker here taking out a knight generally yeah does give access uh, to the other colors as well the dark squares a bit more so white is a bit richer I would argue on the dark squares here uh, we have bishop takes c4 here now on d takes c4 this position with rook f1 uh, the king needs to just unpin the e pawn for e6 here. And look at this. Now we we're cooking with gas on the f file. For example, here, bang, bishop takes b7 is crushing. For example, here, rook takes f6, and there's beautiful stuff uh, occurring where white's absolutely crashing through. Uh, so this position, uh, instead of 
queen takes b7 you might think rook d8 beautiful stuff here bishop e4 for example this position with bishop g6 and bishop c5 taking there uh, there's there's a lot of lovely uh, variations here so anyway uh, bishop takes c4 was played not d takes c4 here and we have king h3 so unpinning that potentially lethal e pawn to expose the bishop to to give it access to g7 we have b6 here being played you might think this is a bit weird what else can black do if rook d8 e6 this position is very dangerous of course and try and nudge that bishop away from f1 for example and this is just horrible for black as one might imagine so b6 we have rook e1 for e6 queen e7 we have a4 now on e6 uh, f6 a4 this position uh, white's doing really quite well as well uh, but a4 it might actually be even stronger just just leaving e6 for a little bit seeing what blacks up to like nice little waiting move before e6 now rook b8 is played here on king j as an example alternative e6 threatening mate in one this position is getting to be quite amusing off the check queen g6 why well, can actually make use of that king and rook position quite well like this for example where it's absolutely devastation after queen h7 here uh, so rook b8 was played e6 f6 and now uh, with this cramp and this locked in like prisoner rook white plays on the queen side with rook a1 because this strength on the dark squares is evident over here a bit trying to undermine this little pawn chain yeah this this is just frozen black on the king side and now white works a little bit on the queen side undermining these pawns might give access to this key diagonal so we have queen g3 a dark square move look at the authority on the dark squares now that white has with the bishop pair so rich on the dark squares with the bishop pair bishop e2 and you might think well this is awkward why actually uses his king Lila uses his why <laughs> her why actually uses her king <laughs> to protect h5 uh, clearly bishop g6 just blunders the pawn by the way so just using the king here on a dark square this liberty on dark squares can be taken because black is weak on the dark squares no bishop on the dark squares uh, we have bishop a6 if black tries to get tactical against uh, the white king uh, this is short-lived hg for example this position uh, you know g4 there's always g5 here that's nasty with that so there's nothing going on with white king on h4 it seems at the moment the white king's safe enough bishop a6 a5 trying to shred these dark squares a bit more now b5 yes concession on dark squares blocked in bishop for the moment Rook goes back to the center. Rook c4, bishop d3. Here, rook c6. On rook c7, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Bishop g6, for example, here, bang, queen takes c7 is a stunning tactical idea with this beauty. Bishop c5. And we have a classic checkmate here. So maybe a bit of caution here with rook c6. Bishop g6, anyway, rook c4. And now, wonderful stuff with the locked in pieces. We have check, and now not just with the idea of taking on a7. Uh, yeah, hold on a sec. Queen f4, bishop b7. There's a bit of repetition. <laughs> um, okay, no, actually, I, I've, <laughs> I was thinking of something else. No, the queen does go back here. Let's see later though. Bishop b7, king g3. Uh, the c3 pawns hanging on bishop takes a7 rook takes g3 this position uh, is still okay for white that, that's okay but um, not as nice as what happens in the game not as aesthetically pleasing king g3 king g8 now white takes on a7 giving c3 the king tucks well h2 now rook c4 now sorry revisiting this check now uh, this is very different to before 
now. So C3 has been exchanged for A7. You might wonder why. Well, check Rook C8, key move here. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you five seconds to pause the video. White just transitions now to an ending, you know, Bishop C5. Because look at the locked in pieces and the big pass pawn. The formula has been simplified, factored on both sides just to leave this huge, great big e6 pawn, which black can do nothing about here. So rook a8, bishop d8, game ended here. If, for example, rook takes d8, e7, crashing through with the pawn, absolutely winning for white. That pawn's queening, winning the rook next. So, yeah, if we look at this game, I believe it's a very, very interesting example of a dynamic pawn sacrifice followed by a dynamic exchange sacrifice, which kept the bishop cat, uh, pair. And then white got richer and stronger on the dark squares, essentially, playing to lock down the pieces first on the king side, tear open the queen side to open up more avenues on dark squares, then eventually use that to simplify the game to celebrate the locked down pieces to a winning, totally winning endgame style with that pawn crashing through. I believe these games are super instructive. In our own games, I think we're not so dynamic to become so strong on a certain dollar color <laughs> dollar <laughs> on a certain color complex. This was beautiful bishop pair and color complex domination with the exchange sacrifice in my view. I hope you think so too. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciate it. Thanks very much.